Hello everyone, back to you to today's first video, doing the JMA free monthly forecast for today's uh, first video. So we're going to go three months ahead with the JMA season model, taking us from next month, February, right way through to April in the middle part of the spring. We're going to see what the JMA model is forecasting for this three monthly period. That's of course ahead of the first seasonal model roundup for the spring of 2020 that we're going to release very early on Saturday morning. So you're going to get all of the long range models together, something like 12 or 13 of them. See what we're all showing uh, for the spring for the first time. And the JMA model will form part of that update. Um, but we get a lot of information from the JMA, and of course, we've got all of those other models to look at in the season model roundup. We won't be able to drill down and go in depth into what the JMA is showing um, because we won't have time. So, we always like to take this one out and uh, have a look at it in its own terms, and that's what we're going to do uh, for this first video. Later on this afternoon, we'll have your regular week to 10 day uh, video update, including all of the usual features. Uh, so, we're going to begin with the JMA 500 mil of our height and all is from the North Pole view down from the Arctic view down uh, for the next three months. So this is the 500 bill of our height anomaly for February 2020. It's only a couple of weeks away now, of course, the beginning of February. So if everything's working correctly, this should be the most reliable part of the update. Uh, yellow, orange, and red extrapolate to above average heights, which is high pressure. Blue to below average heights, which is low pressure. So you can see that for February, we are dominated across much of northern and western Europe by an area of above average heights. This is quite a change on what we've had through the past few months. Of course, it's been a very unsettled few months, to say the least, through the autumn and through the first half of winter. But if this is right, February should should see a shift into more anticyclonic high pressure dominated weather. Below average heights in the North Atlantic and also to our east and northeast. Flow the jet will be doing something a bit like that. Does look as though it could be colder in February for northern and eastern parts of Europe. So it's been a very mild winter for like Western Russia, Northeast Europe. In fact, that whole eastern side of Europe has been generally uh, very mild this winter. That's quite a big change for them. So winter could be biting in the east and the northeast of Europe during this February. But for us across Western Europe and for you sort of central parts of Europe as well. High pressure looks like it's in control. And this is a relatively mild ridge as well, I think. So what you tend to get with high pressure in February, of course, the sun is rapidly strengthening, is that you tend to get relatively mild days under high pressure, or this kind of mid-latitude high. Anyway, you tend to get relatively mild days, but potentially the skies are clear, quite cold nights. So you can have a large range of temperatures uh, from maximum to minimum in February with this kind of pattern. So maybe something like cold nights with frost, but also relatively uh, mild days if there's plenty of sunny spells. Otherwise, we might just fill up with anticyclonic gloom and they're just generally quite mild with day and night temperatures not really alternating. What it does indicate is that it should be a great deal drier, though, across the UK uh, as we come into the latter stages of the winter. Month number two is going to get us through to March. So this is how March 2020 is looking with the JMA. And that ridge, if anything, it's strengthening further. The centre of it is kind of like southern England and France, but it's dominating across much of northern uh, much of northern Europe actually been dominated by this area of high pressure. Low pressure out towards Greenland and Iceland. The jet stream is pushing northwards as well. That looks like it should be a very, very pleasant start to the spring, I have to say. You expect a lot of dry weather with that for March. And um, yes, I think you could also expect pretty warm temperatures as well because we're on the mild side of the jet stream. Again, the sun is rapidly strengthening as you go through uh, to March. Remember, 21st, we'll see the sun on the equator, and then after that, we uh, have the uh, days becoming longer than uh, the nights as the sun moves into the northern hemisphere. So that will see uh, temperatures lifting up. And I expect that's relatively dry and warm, uh, certainly mild, but potentially quite warm. Uh, for March, a very uh, fine start to the spring would be expected with that. And then finally, April, uh, month number three, looks like this. Of course, this is three months away, so it's very uh, much uh, unreliable and um, just a pinch of salt. But it looks like the JMA wants to keep that anticyclonic signal going for April. It does weaken to some degree the high pressure, so it may be a little bit transitional, maybe starting off with high pressure domination and then becoming a bit more unsettled later on. But overall, it looks like an anticyclonic signal for much of Western Europe, including the UK, for April low pressure is out in the Atlantic, the jet stream 
is doing something a bit like that. So yeah, for some parts of Europe could be northern, northeast Europe, it could be a little bit more unsettled and cooler there. But over in West, it looks like we should be dominated by high pressure, really, for the next three months. And so a much drier period of weather coming up after all of the deluge that we've had through the autumn and the first half of the winter. Let's have a look at the tropical mid latitude uh, view then. So we can't see the Arctic this time. That's off the chart. It's up here. But of course, we did just have a look at that view down. Uh, this is the equator of the Earth just there. And then we've got the northern hemisphere uh, just here. And of course, we've got the southern hemisphere down there. Uh, you can iron in the top right hand corner of the chart as you are looking at it. So for February, again, coming back to February first of all, February dominated by high pressure, those orange uh, colours in over the UK, red colours across much of central Western Europe, so dominated by high pressure. There is this cold trough on the eastern side of Europe that could see winter biting through Russia and sort of northeastern and eastern parts of Europe. But for us, for February, we're under that ridge of high pressure and so what this means is that the JMA is forecasting quite a dry uh, February so the precipitation anomaly is coming out drier than average for February. Temperature anomaly is also coming out a little bit above average as well so a dry and mild month being forecast uh, during February ending the winter on a drier note compared to the wet weather we've had recently. But mean wind direction, these are always a little bit difficult to make out, these black arrows, but the mean wind direction is kind of coming south southeasterly. So I think that supports the idea that although daytimes might be quite mild, nights could actually be relatively cold with frost um, fairly widespread perhaps by night but again the day should be uh, relatively mild if there's sunshine otherwise it could just be very grey and chilly. you notice on the east side of Europe we're putting down wind from the north so that's the reason sort of northeast and east of Europe goes quite a lot colder. So anticyclonic dry uh, for February with cold nights probably offset by mild days that's what the is forecasting for the end of this week. So we go through to March and we see the ridge, if anything, strengthening and sent just a little bit more to the south in uh, March. So this should be drawing up wind perhaps more from a south southwesterly direction, which would be a milder wind direction. That could be a really quite a warm and dry month as we go through into uh, March. Let's have a look at precipitation anomaly. So because a bit more of a westerly feed, it looks a bit more unsettled for the north, actually. England and Wales still driving average. Scotland, though, and possibly Northern Ireland, goes a little bit above average with precipitation. That's because of the change in the wind direction. Uh, a little bit more of a westerly, southwesterly influence, I think, uh, for March. But the temperature anomaly is mild, even quite warm, you would say. We've got those yellow colours uh, appearing there, especially across England and Wales and central parts of Europe as well. So one to two degrees above average. Uh, that's going to be a very, very pleasant March indeed, getting the month off to uh, really quite a warm start indeed. The black arrow showing the, the mean wind direction uh, again. And again, they're always quite hard to make out these, but they're sort of south southwesterly so that change in wind direction means we lose the frost risk uh by night but the days uh, are still going to be mild or potentially even very mild perhaps during march a lot of fine and warm weather on offer there and then we go through to april which again looks like month number three so it's a long way out but it looks like anticyclonic con signals continue uh, for April, but maybe weakening uh, a little bit. The temperature anomaly in April is still uh, a bit above average, so that's still coming out quite mild. Precipitation-wise, again, generally it's on the drier side. I mean, there might be some rain in the north and west, but overall relatively dry and mild is the signal during April. Finally, the mean wind direction uh, for April looks like it's pushing up the winds with these black arrows sort of from a southerly type direction. So it, it should be a very uh, pleasant month, if anything. It could be a little bit more unsettled, I think, due to the uh, signal for the above average heights being that bit weaker in April compared to February and March. But nevertheless, all three months really with the JMA are being suggested to be dominated by high pressure. So there's a lot of dry weather on offer in the coming three months, if this is right. And wind direction is always sort of southerly. Sometimes February is like south um, southeast 
uh, or east of, of south, you see what I mean, marches west, southwesterly, uh, but all three months, they sort of have a wind kind of from a southerly direction, so there shouldn't really be any problems with temperatures, generally quite a mild, potentially even relatively warm scenario when we get through to March and April. And just a lot of dry weather on offer. So after all of the rain that we've had over the past few weeks and months, looks like we're going to something drier for the uh, coming three-monthly period. But it's only one model, and it's just a snapshot. It could be completely wrong uh, with this forecast. So any other forecast over sort of five to, seven day, uh, five to seven days is fraught with health warnings and you need large pinches of salt. So it's just a snapshot, and we shall see on Saturday when we put this together with all of the other long-range models, we'll see what they're all showing uh, for the spring on Saturday. It might be this is an outlier and all of the other models will be much more unsettled. But we shall find out in a couple of days' time. Right, we'll be back uh, later on with your week's 10-day video update, including all of regular features. So come back for that then. That's all for now, and thanks for watching.